Hi everyone, welcome to the February 2021 uh, update for Nintex new responsive forms for Office 365. So if you jump across to the release notes, uh, first thing you'll notice is our release notes are now stored in help.nintex.com. So you've got all the release notes um, in the left hand side here. If you jump across to Nintex forms for Office 365, you can see we did a release on the 16th of February 2021. And you'll also see that we've got three new features. One is allow the designer to enable set value rules to run when the form opens or when the user interacts with the form. So pretty popular uh, feature request, which we're going to step through today. The second one is repeating section now supports row calculation. Again, a very, uh, very popular uh, feature request, which we now have, which brings repeating section in line with uh, Nintex Workflow Cloud as well. So if you've seen the repeating section row calculation for Nintex Workflow Cloud, it's exactly the same functionality. And the third bullet point is a message will display if the designer is using an unsupported browser. So in line with what uh, Microsoft is recommending, uh, customers move to Microsoft Edge and deprecating IE 11, we are also deprecating IE 11. So in the designer, you will get a message to tell you if your browser is no longer supported. So I don't think we need to demo that last point, but let's first have a look at um, allow the designer to set the uh, set value rules. So jumping across, we're just going to reset my form that I was playing with here before. And let's see what we've got here. So I've got title uh, and we've got, uh, let's add another text short. What I'm going to do is call this uh, first name and we'll call the second one uh, last name. So just going to set up the scenario first. So let's say I wanted to uh, have a rule there where it says set last name. So if first name uh, is equal, equal will do, uh, Ewan. Then the last name, uh, you guessed it, it's going to be Gamble. So if that's true, it's going to set the last name to Gamble. If that's not true, we're just going to blank it out. Uh, value, create rule. So we're going to go ahead and publish that. And we're going to come across to our list and I'm just going to delete that on there. Okay, and we'll do a new one. So we put in E-U-A-N, tab out of it, and it set the last name. And so what we're, what we're doing there is set value rules will execute when the user interacts with the form. They do a tab, they click on a button, they click on a checkbox, any sort of interaction with the form, the rule runs. So I'm just going to delete the last name, press submit. I'm going to open that one up again. You can see first name is Ewan, last name. No rules are run because there hasn't been any user input. We go to edit mode, again, no user input. Uh, now if I go and delete this, E-U-A-N, and oops, and I'll put this back in, E-U-A-N, oops, there we go. And so it's put it back in. So what was happening before was it already knew that that, that value was there. So it's waiting for um, if, if the input is Ewan, if the user's uh, interacted. So let's go back and delete that again. So I put in EUAN, click away, the rule executes. Now if I delete this um, and I save it, we open it up again just to show the example. Hasn't set this, edit, hasn't set this, I clear this out, put it back in, still hasn't worked. I'll put the correct uh, there we go. And now it populates it. Now what users were wanting was, I don't want to have to use a mouse or a, or a keyboard to interact and set that rule running. So there's been a change in the uh, rule settings. We come back to settings area. We go to the bottom. Run change value actions only when the user interacts with the form. Mouse click, keyboard, those sort of things. Now what we can do, run change value actions when the form loads and when the user interacts with the form. So same as before, but also when the form uh, loads as well. So now we've got that change, we can come back to here and we're going to publish and we'll come back to our form. We'll close that. Now, what we're expecting is if we open this, it should actually set the last name. And there we go. So previously it wasn't executing. It wasn't, um, the rule wasn't running because I hadn't, 
on a keyboard or mouse entry. Now, no matter what I do, it's always going to put you on. So I press submit. I've cleared out that field. I open it up again. And it's going to set the last name. So that's a good way of, let's say, um, someone might have changed a field value through the workflow. Like they might have set it to approved through the workflow or something's changed by the workflow. When the form loads, you can actually um, put some additional detail in there uh, automatically. So when in view mode or edit mode, it can actually just go and pre-populate those fields. So that's the first update. The second one was the repeating section now supports row calculation. So let's just keep that form there for a moment. And we're going to say, let's do a repeating section. I'm going to put this up here. Put, uh, no, that's a bound control, so that's not going to work. Let's leave those. Let's do... Um, Let's do uh, price, quantity, or quantity, price, and total example. So we'll do quantity and price and total. Oops, total. So what we're wanting to do is when this is filled and this is filled, then the total should be set. So we don't want them playing with that. We'll put that right down there. So how do we go about doing this row calculation? Now, previously it wasn't, wasn't available. Um, so how do we go about doing that? Well, we come to rules and uh, we can leave that rule there for the moment. Now, what we want is a repeating section um, rule. We want a rule that's inside the row. So if you think about, um, if you've got the form and then inside the repeating section row, it's like a mini form. It's got its own got its own control so we want that like a mini rule inside that in that row we're going to say set total total so we say if price is filled and quantity is filled then total uh, value is so what we're doing here is we're saying when when should I execute this rule well, we execute this rule when price is filled and quantity is filled. Now, you could have any sort of combination. It could be a checkbox in the row, or it could be a single line of text is filled, or whatever it might be. We're doing price and quantity at the moment, and that's when it's going to execute this rule. And then we want to set the the total the, the value of the total field. Now, if I just type in here, it's going to put a static value in here. So what we want to do is press insert, and we want to put in a calculation of price times quantity. Now, the first thing you'll notice on the right-hand side is the variables area has changed. So you notice we've got form controls, SharePoint columns, context uh, variables, and also form display mode. The other thing you'll notice is, um, so you've got your form controls there, which pretty much look the same, but you'll notice the repeating section looks slightly different. It's got this kind of SharePoint look here, and you've got a little arrow here. So if you click on the arrow, you can go down inside the repeating section. So as you can see here, we actually call it an object now, and an object is... A container for multiple multiple uh, multiple primitives, which is single line text uh, or, or text, date, time, number, those sort of things. So if we come down to here, you'll notice we've got price and quantity and total. They're the three fields we created before. Now, what you'll not also notice is they're called a collection because a repeating section it has row after row after row after row, which means there's multiple prices and there's multiple quantities and then it's multiple multiple totals. Now we'll come back to that later around how you'd use a collection. Right now we just want to know the current row or the active row that the user's typing into. So the current row the user's actually uh, entering a price and quantity into. So we go into the current row and you can see where I'm traversing down. What I can now do is insert the price and we can say times by the quantity. So what you can see is form, repeating section, one, current row, price. If I came back here, it would be a little bit different and we'll play with those in a moment. So price times quantity. I'm going to insert that, go and create the rule and let's test it out. So we're going to say two widgets at two dollars each is four dollars and three widgets at three dollars is nine and that's the row calculation happening. That's how it works. Now you probably think well that's great but what if I wanted to have a grand total across all my totals? How do I get that done? Well, that's a different calculation. That's not a row calculation anymore. It's actually a calculation on the form level. So let's go back to rules and we go, uh, let's do add form rule and we'll create a grand total. Let's call it uh, set. Well, actually, I've skipped a step. What field are we going to set? We don't have one yet. 
jumped ahead of myself. Let's go currency and let's put a space next to it. Make that a bit bigger. Okay, now we want to set this. Give it a name might help as well. Grand total. Okay, so we've got our grand total field. Now we want to go and set that value based on the collection of total. So how do we do that? We'll go to roll, uh, rules and we're going to do a form rule because this isn't in the repeating section row. It's on the whole form, if that makes sense. I'm going to say set grand total. Now we're going to say, um, now this again, this is the if statement is when or how do I execute this rule? So when is someone interacting with the form? So we don't really care if it's first name or last name or grand total because we kind of um we want to know something inside that repeating section because we want to know that collection of, to of total so what you could do is you come in here and insert and you could say well i know that i've got this idea of a repeating section and i come here and i could say well what if we did the what if we set the grand total only if all of the totals together were greater than zero because otherwise it doesn't make sense so you could say well i'll sum the collection of total so that's all the totals in all the rows so that's why you use the collection versus the current row so coming back here we'll insert the total we'll do a sum and insert and i've jumped ahead of myself again so sum those together and we go if it's greater than zero so if the sum of total is greater than zero then i want to do something is it greater than zero yes it is then i want to set the grand total uh, value to and it's the same function it's the same function I want the grand total to be to the total the sum of, of the, the totals in the repeating section so what we could do here is we go create the rule and you could do it two ways you could either say well I could just copy that copy that um, copy that logic and done is the grand total not a number yes, it is Oh, whoops, silly me. So sum is, uh, that's going to give me a Boolean response. So I've, I've, I'm incorrect. So there you go. So that's going to give me the, um, that's going to give me the total as a number. So we can insert that. So if we wanted to use this same, same function twice, what we could do is actually say, uh, get rid of that date. What's this going to say if it's greater than zero? Now, what you're now thinking about here is, well, this is, this is um, exactly the same as this one. So we can do that. We, we, we could do that. Let's, let's see if it works first. So we go two times two is four and the grand total is four. Two times two is four and now it's eight. Now what I was talking about around reusability in that rule. So let's say set grand total. These are the same. And maybe you're putting GST on it or maybe you're doing something different with it. But eventually you've got to remember Hang on, I've got that same formula here, and it, it could be here, and it could be used somewhere else. Now, if I wanted to be more efficient, I could do a grand total variable. So I'm going to come into here, and I go grand total. And then I can just paste that back in there. I'll get rid of that zero. Um, variable. Variable. And it's a decimal. So go ahead and create that. We go back to rules and grand total. So then we can clear this out. We can go insert and form variables and we can insert that guy. Clear that out and insert that guy. Now it's the same thing, but what happens is we might need to change that variable. We can change it once rather than having different formulas being out of sync or whatever it might be. Now let's go and check if that still works. Price, quantity, $4, three, three, nine, 13. So that's how the row calculation works. And that's also how we can calculate across collections. And we also looked at the form rule executions. So they're the two features that I think are really worth getting across for Nintex new responsive forms for Office 365. Um, the third one being the um, unsupported browser. So that will only appear if you're a forms designer. It won't actually happen when you're opening the form. So I hope you find that useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything else. Cheers.